Welcome to the general chemistry section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 41 to 45. So first, I'll show you guys the questions so that you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 41, 42, 43, 44, and 45. Now let's go through the questions together. In question 41, it says a solution is developed with 0 0.01 molar of HCl. What is the pOH of the solution? So this is the concentration that we have of HCl, and we're asked for the pOH. So there are two ways that you can get this. You can just directly look for pOH, or you can look for pH, which is equal to the negative log of the concentration of protons that we have. We know that HCl is a strong acid, so it's gonna fully dissociate. So the concentration of HCl is the same as the concentration of H plus. And so we just plug that in, 0 0.01 molar. And our pH is equal to two. And you should know that the relationship between pH and pOH is that they add up to 14. So if I were to plug in the pH and rearrange to get the pOH, I would get 12. So D is the correct answer here. In question 42, it says at a temperature of 45 degrees, the equilibrium constant for water is fourfold greater than that at 25 degrees Celsius. Which of the following is a concentration of hydrogen ions at 45 degrees Celsius? So at 45 degrees, we're saying the equilibri equilibrium constant for water fourfold greater than that at 25 degrees. And then we're asked for the concentration of hydrogen ions. So 25 degrees, this is standard. You should know, this is a number you should already have in your head, equilibrium constant for water, which is equal to concentration of hydrogen ions multiplied by hydroxide, that is equal to one times 10 to the negative 14. That's at 25 degrees Celsius. Now we're saying at 45, it's four times that. So that means that it is four times 10 to the negative 14. We also know that the concentration of H plus is equal to OH minus. So if we were to set this as an arbitrary value X, X is whatever the concentration is, and take this, plug it in here for KW, we know that KW is equal to H plus times OH minus, which means that it's just X times X, right? So this number that we have is equal to x squared. That means when we solve for x, we just take the square root of each side, and we get that 2 times 10 to the negative 7 is equal to x. So a is our correct answer. a is the concentration of both hydrogen ions and OH minus, and that's what we were asked to look for. In question 43, it says the mineral with this molecular formula has a net oxidation state of zero. What is the oxidation state of aluminum in the mi mineral? So this mineral, this mineral has a net oxidation state of zero, and we want to know the oxidation state of just aluminum. So to solve for this, we know for potassium, the oxidation state will be plus one. So there are some general oxidation states that you should know that are almost always true. So in certain situations, they'll be true. There are different ones that like oxygen can have and other ones, but for the most part, oxygen, you should know it should be minus two, especially in this situation. So potassium was plus one. Silicon is in the same group as carbon. So just like carbon, it's going to be plus four. So we know those three, we just have to figure out for aluminum. Also keep in mind how many of each element we have. We have one 
potassium, so it's going to remain plus 1. But we have 3 of silicon, so it's going to be 4 times 3, which is 12. And then similarly, we have 8 oxygen, so instead of just 2, it's 2 times 8, which gives us overall 16. And when we add these up, we get negative 3. But we were told there's a net oxidation state of 0, so the rest must be coming from aluminum. So minus 3 to make that 0, we must have plus 3. So C is the correct answer. It's plus 3. It's not A or B. D is saying plus 2 or plus 3, depending on the oxygen state of the oxygen atoms, oxidation state of those atoms. Well, no, that's incorrect. This is assuming that those are going to change. No, in this case, you should know that it's going to be minus 2 for oxygen, overall giving it a minus 16 oxidation state. So it's just going to be plus 3. It's not changing between two numbers. In question 44, it says, according to VSEPR theory, what is the electron pair geometry of NH3 ammonia? So according to this theory, we want to know the electron pair geometry. Keep in mind, we're talking about the electron pair geometry, not the molecular geometry, okay? Electron pair geometry is dependent on how many things something is bonded to. So nitrogen, how many electron pairs does it have around it? And that counts both bonding pairs and non-bonding pairs. So nitrogen is going to look something like this. Keep in mind it has a lone pair. If we were asked for the molecular geometry, that would be tri trigonal pyramidal. That's not even an option here, but we are asked the electron pair geometry, which is D tetrahedral. If you have four pairs of electrons around you, you are tetrahedral. You have four objects around you. And then if we think about the molecular geometry, which is the actual shape of it, that's going to be different because now we're considering repulsion as well coming from that lone pair. So once again, trigonal pyramidal. But the answer here for what we're asked, electron pair geometry is D tetrahedral. In question 44, we're asked which of the following mixtures, if added in a one-to-one -one ratio, will have the highest pH. So we have some mixtures, which one will have the highest pH? So a high pH, remember, corresponds to something which is more basic. If we have an acid and a base mixing, and we are adding them in a one-to-one -one ratio, then they should neutralize each other and give us a neutral pH, which is 7, if they're of the same strength. So for example, if you look at option B, strong acid and strong base, add these in a one-to-one -one ratio, they'll neutralize each other and we'll have pH very close to 7, or should be 7. But if we have, like in option A, one is stronger than the other, generally the stronger one will win out. So strong acid, weak base, instead of just coming to neutral pH, the acid is stronger, so it's going to dissociate to a greater extent, have more protons floating around in the solution, therefore it's going to be overall more acidic, so we're going to have a low pH. It's going to go low, below the 7. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the highest pH. In option C, we have weak acid, strong base. That would be the correct one. We first reach 7, and then we go beyond it because the base is stronger in this case, and it keeps going and making things more basic. There's more OH- floating around, so it goes above 7, and therefore we have a higher pH. This is going to be the highest of the options given to us, so C is the correct answer. D is incorrect. Weak acid, weak base. If, just like in option B, we're assuming they're of similar strength, once again, they're going to neutralize each other equally. It's not going to be more basic or more acidic. That's it for the questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to check out our course. The link is in the description below as well as right here. And in that course, we go through a lot more questions just like this, going through all the different answers and explaining why each one is correct or incorrect. Other than that, make sure to subscribe here to this channel to stay up to date with the videos that we post here. That's it for